Hey family, so glad to be with you today. And I know it's been a while since you have seen me in this particular spot preaching. It's because I really ain't had nothing to say, all right? But, but uh, over the last couple of months, I have been really spending some time with God uh, around my uh, own uh, mental well-being and physical well-being. And, and one of the, uh, the things that I have arrived at is uh, the importance of taking that time so that you will have something to contribute. Uh, as we mentioned earlier in the service, we are looking forward to seeing you on August the 1st. Uh, registration will begin uh, around the beginning of July, and we are looking at how we can just really minister to uh, the entire world uh, in the midst of this reopening, which means we're going to be spending as much energy on the, uh, on, the, on the virtual experience as we are on the in-person experience, so thank you. I do have a word today. My word today, remember this, this sermon series is one word that can and will change your life, and that word is courage. Courage, y'all. I'm, uh, I'm looking at 1 Samuel chapter uh, 17, verse 1. Uh, it's a familiar passage of Scripture, and you know uh, this. As a matter of fact, you might even recite this by memory along with me. Uh, it's the story of a brother named David who came up against his own Goliath. Now, who is and what is the Goliath that you are facing? And that's what I want you to just kind of ruminate on just for a few minutes as we uh, read this Scripture. Now, the Philistines gathered their armies for battle. They were gathered at Soka which belongs to Judah, and an encamped between Soka and Azekah in the Ephes Damim. Saul and the Israelites gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah and formed ranks against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on the mountain on one side, and the Israelites stood on the mountain on the other side uh, with a valley in between them. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines, a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. He had greaves of bronze on his legs and, and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. Bad dude here, y'all. I ain't lying. The shaft of his spear was like a, wove, a weaver's beam, and his spearhead weighed 600 shekels of iron, and his shield bearer went before him. Hmm. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come out, come down to me. If he's able to fight me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us from now on. And the Philistines said, today I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. I told you, the word today is courage, courage. That's what we need. You know, we think about this scripture, uh, we, we are reminded of just how uh, daunting, how daunting a giant can be in our lives. And I don't know about you, but I don't know what your giants are, what the giants you are facing right now in your life. But I do know there are many, many giants, uh, psychological, there are physical giants that we are facing, uh, there, there are emotional giants that we are facing. And when we think about all of these giants that we could potentially be facing right now in our lives, we know that there is a word for all of us who might be a little afraid in the midst of this moment. You know, you know I, I believe doubt can be a giant. Yes, I do. I believe, I believe envy can be a giant. I, I, I do. I, you know, I, I believe even as we think about fear as, as, a, as, as a giant, 
And as we think about all of these limiting uh, experiences that we have because something in front of us has, a, uh, has literally overcome us, uh, we, we know that there is, there is something that we can do. Let, let me first begin by defining courage, all right? And courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is knowing that the thing that you have to do is more important than the thing you fear the most. That's what I'm talking about. See, when I, I think about the fact that, that in the midst of all that we are facing, you know, the, uh, the, the, the courage that we need to get it done uh, has to overcome the fear that we have literally uh, uh, placed in our whole being in the midst of this. So we know uh, this courage. We, we're summoning it right now. You know, when I think about uh, courage, I, I'm, I'm only reminded of, of David. And, you know, we, we, we think about David in this text, and we know that, that David had something to, uh, uh, to, to tell us and teach us. And what I want, to, uh, want, want you to know is that David and Goliath, uh, uh, you know, if we look at it um, sort of metaphysically, we, we, we realize that there are, uh, there are places in this story uh, that argues that for, for, strong, for the strong, the same qualities uh, that appear to give them strength are often uh, sources of great weakness. And, and whereas for the weak, uh, the act of facing overwhelming odds produces great strength and even beauty. You know, you know so, so it really brings me to a theme that I have talked about before. And that theme is uh, just kind of evolving around what it means to be an underdog. Any underdogs watching today? Any underdogs present today? Absolutely. You, you, know, you know, my, uh, my dad, um, I miss him. Uh, he actually uh, went to be with God on July the 4th. Uh, in a few weeks, is, we'll, I'll be celebrating uh, the day he made his transition. And, and, and the one thing I, uh, I always remember fondly about my, my, my dad was he always cheered for the underdog, always. If it, if it was a boxing match, he was going to cheer for the guy getting ready to get his butt whipped. If, if it was a, a basketball team, he was cheering for the team uh, that, that had the most likely potential of, of losing. If it was a football game, he was going to cheer for the one probably with the black coach, all right? <laughs> and that, that, was, that was how my, my, my dad rolled. But, but the one thing for sure, my dad understood uh, the, uh, the experience of the underdog. I don't know uh, fully if... if he himself or considered himself an underdog, but, but, but being born when he was born and living in the country that he was living in and experiencing what he was experiencing, I know there was a good possibility that he too felt at times like, like an underdog. Well, maybe, maybe even, let's take it a step further, maybe he knew his son was going to be an underdog, all right? And many of y'all have heard my basketball story. And I won't spare, I'm going to spare you today that story, but I made the history books in 1969. And if you want to know any more about it, just send me a direct message on Instagram and I'll tell you about that story. But, but, the, but the reality is he would always cheer for the team, for the individual, for the, uh, for the person that he thought would be losing. Now, 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 you know, we think about how uh, this whole experience of the underdog uh, uh, de uh, develops, and what we realize is that what I just read a few minutes ago, and, and that is the, uh, that, that strength, you know, there are qualities that appear uh, to give uh, the strong uh, an advantage, uh, but those same qualities are the qualities that give those who are not as strong uh, the advantage in the midst of their, uh, of, of, of their uh, understanding the, uh, um, the, the, the power of weakness. So, so he, you know, when, when I look at this thing, I, I know that, uh, that there are some moments in this text. I'm going to read, read some more extensive parts of this text uh, that, that give us more insight as to uh, who I consider one of the central uh, characters in this, uh, in this story, and that is David. 
You know, uh, you know, you knew I was going to get to David and Goliath, right? You, you, you did know that. But well, here, here we are. When we look at David's journey and, and we look at his, his journey as an underdog, we realize that as we follow the, the sort of the, the, the chronological sojourn, we, we know that there is, is, is a lot to David's story uh, that, that paints him uh, as the least likely to succeed. Now, now, I don't know if, if you are uh, that person who might have been considered in your community or your neighborhood or your family the least likely to succeed, but look at you now. In regards to what they said about you, here you are right now. Well, David had that same experience. First, if we look at the biblical encounter telling us how the prophet Samuel came to, uh, to Jesse's house uh, to select a new king, when he got to Jesse's house, uh, Jesse looked around and, 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 and Jesse brought one son up and, 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 and the prophet Samuel said, no, not that one. And, and, and Jesse brought another son up and, and, and the prophet Samuel said, no, not that one. And, 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 and then, then the, the prophet Jesse said, what, what about that boy that's out in the field with the sheep? And, 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 and you can imagine everybody's experience in that moment in the house who had all written David off as, as simply a, a sheep herder, right? Saying, oh, no, you mean, you're talking about David? And, you know, and here we are in this moment realizing that, that here David was chosen even when he was out in the field tending sheep. That, that's why you have to be careful as to how you treat opportunity. When, when you think about opportunity, uh, you might think, I am out in the field tending sheep and I should be king right now. Well, you might just need a little more time in the field uh, before you take your throne because you might need a little more work out there with them sheep, if you know what I mean. Just know that you are chosen. Say to yourself, I'm chosen. Yeah. You know, you think about the fact that you're chosen even when those around you don't think you should be chosen. That was the experience of David. Then our second uh, scriptural reunion with David uh, as this underdog is when David goes to King Saul's house uh, to work in the palace, you know, and in the midst of that, we, we, we realize that, that, uh, that the king didn't realize uh, that David had been brought to the palace for some on-the-job training, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, and you've been complaining about your job that you've been working virtually and remote on for the last year and a half, and you're talking about now, oh, I don't want to go back into that workplace. Uh, hey, hey, you might have been over the last year and a half in some on-the-job training for what your life is going to look like after you have completely honored your assignment on that job. Right. Never, 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 never discount small beginnings. Never, never, never discount that, 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 that moment when you are literally being prepared for something much greater than you can see right now. Because I'm here to tell you, God is up to something. Then our third encounter, our third encounter in this, in this, in this Davidic narrative uh, sequence is about and this, 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 this David, the underdog, uh, emerging, emerging as the one who will ultimately fight Goliath. I stopped by to tell somebody today listening, somebody today listening, uh, not, not to worry about uh, uh, not getting picked when you thought you should have been picked, uh, not, not being uh, 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 observed when you were doing a great job in the palace, all right, uh, even uh, being discounted uh, when it's time to go to battle and, and no one felt that you could help defend the, uh, the honor of your people. You know, God is up to something in this, in this text, and we, and we know that, that when, when this moment occurred, the Israelites on one mountaintop and the Philistines on the other mountaintop, that, that there was a moment getting ready to happen that, that began in David's life long before David even knew that he was being prepared for greatness. So what I want to tell you today is that you are being prepared for greatness right now in the midst of, of what you're experiencing right now. So stop discounting. Stop discounting. Let's look at this text. Here we are. So, so, so here we are in the, uh, uh, in, on, on the two mountaintops, and, uh, and the valley is right there between the two 
warring factions. Here we are, the Valley of Elah. And the Israelite army had been terrorized by the Philistine giant, who had been in the, in the valley just basically saying, hey, send somebody down to fight me. Send somebody down to, to take me on. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. And in the midst of that, in the midst of that, none of the, of the warriors, the enfranchised warriors, were willing to take this giant on. And you know, in, verse, in chapter 17, verses 4 through 7, uh, we're reminded, we're reminded, I got to tell you again, we're reminded that, 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 that giants are deceptive and, and they always look bigger than they really are. You, you think about in this moment, uh, you know, the, uh, the Israelite army saw, saw, saw Goliath in the, in the valley, and, and as a giant, he, he probably looked, you know, much larger, much larger than, they, than any of them could imagine having to go up against. But, but imagine this, nine, nine feet tall, some, some say he was, and, 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 and you think about this. The, these deceptive giants uh, can take on the characteristics of fear and anger and confusion and low self-esteem and idolatry and doubt and lies and codependency and discouragement and sickness and grief with the sole purpose of defeating you by limiting your potential. You, you think about this text, and we, we know that, that as the stage is being set, as the stage is being set, here we are looking at Goliath in the valley and the Israelite army deciding, who are we going to send to fight this giant? This is where the story really picks up for me. And, and, and in the midst of this, uh, I like the fact that, that when, we, when we look at David, I'm going to pull up my, I had a, had a note here that I wanted to share with you. When we look at David, um, uh, we want to, uh, want, want to be reminded that, um, that, that, that many, many people will look at you and make an assessment as to what they think they see on you but not knowing fully what you have been through. You know, I was telling, I was telling the cat this morning, a guy was telling me, uh, uh, actually a couple of days ago, a guy was telling me a couple of days ago, he said, wow, wow, man, you, you, don't, you don't look like uh, you are about to turn 65. And just for those of you watching today, uh, June the 9th, uh, I will be turning 65 years old, and I am, hallelujah, glad. To, <laughs> to uh, be turning anything, all right, <laughs> in, this, in this life. But he said, hey, man, you don't, you don't look like you're turning 65. I said, hey, man, I don't look like what I've been through, all right? <laughs> That's all right. But in the midst of this, when, when David stepped up and said, I will fight that giant, somebody said, hey, they, they, what you talking about, David? You, you, don't, you don't have what it takes to fight that, 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 that giant. And then, then, then David, I love this, I love this. David, David takes, uh, takes, a, uh, takes him down a, a little history lesson, and, and he said, look here, that giant ain't nothing. Uh, I, have, I have fought lions and bears, all right? And, and, and David began to, like, like, spell out his pedigree, and in the midst of that, uh, uh, J- David said, this giant ain't nothing in comparison to those lions and bears, you know. And, and what David was reminding them of, if you don't know my history, you cannot predict my future. That's what I'm talking about. David said, hey, you're writing me off without knowing the full story. And you can't do that. No, no, sir. I remember my, my, my daddy said, hey, that, you know, if, if, you, if you see me uh, in a fight with a bear, pray for the bear. All right? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, in the midst of this moment, what we needed to know is in this moment, uh, we should have we been encouraging David instead of attempting to, to uh, discourage David. Because David had already had his fight. You know, what he was telling you right now, was it's a uh, you know it's it's but right now it's going to be between me and that giant and 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 if you know what I know then then the giant is already ready lost 
You know, you know the one thing I want to I want to do right now, and I want to tell you, you know, you know, stop making assessments based on what you think you know about somebody. You know, don't we do that often? Don't we don't we make assessments around what we we think we know about people? You know, or we can even go to the old adage, don't judge a book by its cover. You know, that's foolishness. And anytime we do it, we are setting ourselves up to, uh, to really miss an opportunity uh, to, uh, to really engage a, uh, um, a potentially a, uh, a, a new friend. You know, we really are. But, but here we are. Uh, David has already uh, laid out his history. Uh, he said, in essence, I fought lions and bears, uh, and, and, and this, this giant uh, has, has nothing uh, on, on me. And uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the midst of this moment, we realize that, that, that God is up to something. And, uh, you know, and then Saul, you know, Saul replies, you know, but you're, you're not able to go out against this Philistine and fight uh, with him. Uh, you're only a boy, and he has, has been a fighting man from his youth. And, uh, and, and, and David said to him in verse 17, 34, you know, uh, said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep, all right? And that's when he lays out the fact that, you know, lions and bears came and, and, and carried off the flock, and I went, I went, I went after them to get them. So, so, so in this moment, in verse, in, in, in verse 17, 38, uh, Saul, dressed in his own tunic and his own coat of armor, uh, decides uh, that he was going to put the coat of armor uh, and the bronze helmet on David. First, first, first point, let me get, go back to the first point. If you don't know my history, don't try to predict my future, all right? <laughs> I know what I've been through. I know what I can do. Don't bet against me. All right? Pray for the bear. <laughs> right? <laughs> Pray for the bear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Verse 17, 38. Saul takes his armor, puts it on David. You know, David fastened on the sword and the tunic, tried walking around in it. It was clunky. And, uh, and David said, I can't use these. I can't, I can't go with these. Uh, verse 39. He said, because I am not used to them. You know, you know, the one thing that, that you, have to, you have to realize in the, in the, in the midst, of, in the, midst of, uh, of, of the fight that you are in for your life is that sometimes you have to play by a different set of rules than your adversary. See, your adversary came to you uh, with a game plan, all right? Uh, Goliath came into that valley with a, with a game plan. Uh, Goliath was ready for some hand-to-hand -hand combat because that's the way he had been fighting uh, probably throughout his fighting career. As a matter of fact, all of that armor uh, that Goliath had on and all of the armor that Saul was trying to get David to put on was because in this moment, uh, it was customary for the two warriors to go head-to-head -head with each other. Uh, and, and in that moment, of course, a, a, a nine-foot Goliath uh, would, could slaughter a, uh, a, a shepherd boy. But, but in this moment, we realize that, that when you are on an opponent's battleground, sometimes you got to change the game. And that's what David did. David changed the game. In, in the midst of this, there's a scripture in 2 Corinthians 10.3 10, that says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through, the, through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And even though I walk in the flesh, I don't fight in the flesh. See, see, every time somebody cuts you off and you think you need to defend your honor by telling that person off or, or shooting them in the finger or something, you just walked in the flesh, not realizing that God has equipped you with a, with a weapon, with a strong a weapon that's stronger than anything anybody has in their possession. But you got you to gotta understand. You know, in, in, the, in the spiritual nature of things really calls for uh, an elevated way of viewing the world around you. 
You know, if you're still walking around thinking that you can, you know, you can defend yourself with, with, with your fist or, you know, you, you think you've got to pull your gun uh, on everybody and, you know, you think you've got you to, you know, go physical in every situation and you're preparing and waiting for that moment, then, then you are missing what God has already given you in terms of a weapon that is mightier than anything anybody might have in their arsenal. So number one, if you don't know my history, stop trying to predict my future. Number two, you know, when you really want to win the game, you got to play by a different set of rules. Right? And number three, (laughs) I love this third point. And this third point, uh, here here they are in the the valley. (laughs) And... uh, and, and, and Goliath, <laughs> you know, so, you know, the Goliath says, come down to me, you know, and starts calling them names and taunting him. And, uh, and, and David, I love this, verse, verse 45, 1745. David says, you come against me with sword and spear. But I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the the God, the armies of Israel who you have defied. And then David in verse 46 says, And this day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. (laughs) You come to me with sword and spear. You, you come to me with, with carnal weaponry, with insults, with abuse, with degradation. But I come to you in the name of the Lord. Hmm. The one who has fought my battles. Huh. Yeah. You know, I was, I was thinking about the, uh, the old church I, I grew up in, uh, Greater Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. And, uh, and I remember uh, during the week I would hang out with my, uh, with my Auntie Mei Mei uh, Monday night at uh, Mission, Mission One meeting. And I remember sitting around that circle uh, with those ladies, older ladies, and and I would be sitting there slightly distracted. And, uh, and those ladies would, um, would break into a song. <laughs> One of them would say, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the the Lord until I die. I, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Until I die. And as I sat there as a kid, you know, I, I, would, I would listen and I would say, man, I think, I think these, these ladies mean that, you know. I, 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 think they, I think they really trust in the Lord. And, and, then, and then someone uh, would, would, would look uh, out and, and, and the second verse would, would I, could, I could feel this second verse. You know, when, 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 when someone would, would sing it out, I will watch, fight, and pray. I will watch, fight, and pray. I will watch, fight, and pray until I die. I will watch, fight, and pray. I will watch, fight, and pray. I will watch, 
fight and pray until I die. Mm. I was just thinking about that today. And what if we, we really trust in the Lord? With all our heart. <laughs> Remember this scripture, right? And lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge God. And God will direct your path. When it's time to fight, and that time does come, remember, we don't have to use these. But we have a God that will fight our battles. And if you're ever thinking about quitting, I want you to remember David's experience in that valley. When he ran down in that, into that valley and he picked up those five stones and he put one of them in that sling and, and I can see that moment when David started rotating that stone. And hit Goliath in the only vulnerable place in his entire body, in his head. And he falls to the ground. And David runs up on him and honors his word <laughs> and cuts his head off. I'm not advocating violence, y'all, but sometimes these giants that come up against you. I named a few of them. When you have defeated that giant, sometimes you just got to cut off his head. And for those of you who have felt like quitting, just know that God is up to something right now. And courage is what you're going to need to get through to the place that God has prepared for each and every one of you. I love you. I thank you for just being uh, part of our family, for journeying with us. We have many times here at St. John's felt like David in that valley. And every time we have felt that, we were reminded that we have the Lord on our side. And we can call on that name of the Lord. You know, uh, as we move forward and, and we take the next steps, uh, the only way we can take these steps is with you. And I thank you today for just journeying with us. Uh, if you haven't already uh, joined our community here, uh, I want you to go online today and join this community. If y'all haven't already taken the step, take the step today because we need you. We cannot do this without you. We're moving, moving forward on, on building, the, uh, building the Jackson. We're going to take that step. We're going to create housing for young people who are aging out of foster care. We're going to do it right here on this campus. And this house of worship will continue to be that anointed center of grace in the middle of our city. We thank you so much for just being part of our family. Remember, I love you and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. And don't forget to have courage.